my channel. Before we start this video, I just want to thank you guys so so much for 1,000 subscribers. Like I can't believe we finally reached 1,000 subscribers. I'm so so happy. I woke up today and it was the first thing I saw and so I just want to say I'm so so happy and I'm so thankful for every single one of you. And if you're new here and it's your first time seeing my channel, hi, my name is Juana. I post two crime videos every Saturday, so it will mean the world if you could subscribe to my channel and click the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you have a case that you want to suggest, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram, my Twitter will be linked down below in the description box. And I also have a TikTok account where I post uh, videos sometimes. Yeah, I know I've been saying like for the past like what two weeks that I've that I'm going to post there more frequently and I haven't posted a video. I'm gonna try to film tomorrow for TikTok. So without further ado, let's just start this video. Today we are going to talk about the murder of John Lin. John Lin, also known as Justin Lin, was born on December 13th of 1978. He was an international student from Wuhan and he was also an undergraduate in the engineering and computer science faculty at Concord University in Montreal in Canada. John Lin had been studying in Montreal since July of 2011. Previously, he had attended a language school and had a, worked in a part-time job as a convenience store clerk. And then he moved into Griffintown area apartment with a roommate in May of 2012. So this was the only information I could find about the victim. So now I'm going to talk about the predator. Luca Rocco Maganta was born on July 24th of 1982 in Ontario. He legally changed his name from Eric Clinton Kirk Newman to Luca Rocco Maganta in August of 2006. And he was the first of three children. According to him, his mother was obsessed with cleanliness. Sometimes she wouldn't even lock her kids out of, of their house so she could clean. And once she put her children's pet rabbits out in the cold to freeze to death. And his father was diagnosed with schizophrenia in 1994 and then his parents got divorced and he went to live with his grandmother. In 2003, he began to appear in gay pornographic videos, occasionally working as a stripper. He appeared as a pin-up model in a 2005 issue of Toronto's Fab magazine using the pseudonym Jimmy. He had multiple cosmetic surgeries and he auditioned for the TV show Plastic Makes Perfect in 2008. In 2005, Luca was convicted of one count of impersonation and three counts of fraud after impersonating a woman to apply to a credit card and spending over $10,000. He pleaded guilty and received a nine-month conditional sentence with 12 months of probation. Luca declared bankruptcy in March of 2007, owning $17 in various debts. The bankruptcy was fully discharged in December of 2007. Luca created many profiles on multiple social media and discussion forums over several years to plant various claims about himself. One rumor emerged in 2007 claiming that Luca was in a relationship with Carla Omolka, a high profile Canadian convicted murderer, which then Luca denied in an interview with Toronto Sun. Now let's go back to talk about Jun Lin and his murder. Jun Lin was last seen on May 24th of 2012 and his friends reported that they got a text message from his phone at 9pm. His boss became suspicious when he didn't show up for his shift the next day and on May 27, three of his friends went to his apartment and didn't find him anywhere. So two days later, Jun Lin was reported missing. On May 25th, 2012, an 11-minute video titled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick was uploaded to Beckscore.com. The video showed a male tied up to a bed frame being repeatedly stabbed with an ice pick and a kitchen knife, then dismembered and followed by acts of necrophilia. The predator uses a knife and a fork to cut out some of the flesh and gets a dog to chew on the body and just imagine that scene makes me want to throw up. How can someone do this? I, I'm never gonna understand this. The Canadian authorities obtained a more extension version of the video and they say that cannibalism may have been performed. And materials promoting the video appeared online 10 days before the murder. On the next day, an attorney from Montana tried to report the video to the Toronto police, but the report was dismissed by officials. And Best Guard viewers also attempted to report the video. So later, police confirmed that the video was authentic and they were able to identify the victim as an Asian male and apparently some parts of his body had been already sent to Ottawa. 
On May 29th, a package containing a left foot was delivered to the national headquarters of the Conservative Party of Canada. The package was stained with blood, had a full smell, and was marked with a red heart symbol. Another package containing a left hand was intercepted in a Canada Post processing facility addressed to the Liberal Party. A janitor discovered a decomposing torso in a suitcase left in the garbage pile in an alley behind an apartment building in Snowdown area in Montreal. After searching the scene, police recovered human remains, bloody clothes, papers identifying the suspect, as well as sharp and blunt objects. Uh, footage from surveillance cameras inside the building showed the suspect bringing numerous garbage bags outside, and the image matches the suspect who was captured on video in the post office. At 11.33 p.m., police searched Lucas' apartment on Decorey Boulevard. He had moved in four months prior and his rent was paid up to June 1st, and the apartment had been mostly empty before he left. Blood was found on the mattress, the refrigerator, the bathtub, and the table. And then on May 30th, it was confirmed that the body parts belonged to the same person, later identified as June Lin, and they quickly were able to identify the suspect as well as Luca. A note was found with the package sent to the Constitutive Party, saying that the six body parts had been distributed and the killer would kill again. The other three packages also had notes, but their, but their contents was disclosed by police because they were concerned about possible copycat crimes. And then on June 5th, two packages were sent to two different schools, and it was confirmed that both packages were sent from Montreal. On July 1st, his head was recovered at the edge of a small lake after police received an anonymous tip. Then an arrest warrant for Luca was issued, and he was accused of first-degree murder, committing an indignity to a dead body, publishing obscene material, mailing the obscene material, criminally harassing Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper and several other members of the parliament. On May 31st, 2012, Interpol issued a red notice for Luca at the request of the Canadian authorities. The red notice requests that Luca be provisionally arrested. Luca booked a flight from Montreal to Paris on May 25th using his own name. After his arrival in France, his phone cell Signal was traced to a hotel, but by the time police arrived there, he had already left. But in his hotel room, police found pornographic magazines and a hair sickness bag. But at the hotel, Luca used a fake passport. So Luca had contacts in Paris from previous visits, uh, but the man he stayed with for two nights didn't realize who he was until he had left. And then Luca boarded an airline bus to Berlin. On June 4th, he was arrested in Berlin. He tried to give fake names, but he ended up admitting who he was. And his identity was confirmed through fingerprint evidence. Luca appeared on court on the next day, and German officials says that he did not oppose to his extradition. On June 18th, he was delivered to Canadian authorities, and he came back to Montreal, where he was placed in the solitary confinement. On June 19, 2012, Luca appeared on court through a video to plead not guilty to all charges through his lawyer. Two days later, he appeared in person at a high security Montreal courtroom to request a trial by jury. So, before the trial, they had a hearing that began on March 11, 2013. Luca's defense team requested that the media and the public be buried entirely from the hearing, but this was declined the next day. And Jun Li's father, Jiren Lin, traveled from China to attend the hearing. Expert witnesses testified, including a forensic pathologist, a forensic toxicologist, a forensic odontologist, a bloodstain analytic, data recovery specialist, and an internet investigations officer. The prosecution also displayed video evidence. So, on his trial, Luca pled not guilty. He admitted the acts of which he was accused, but he claimed that he was mentally ill, so he was not responsible for what he did. And during the trial, his defense argued that he was in a psychotic state at the time of the crimes, so he could not be held responsible for his actions. The prosecutor argued that the murder of Jun Lin was organized and premeditated, and Luca was purposeful, mindful, ultra-organized, and ultimately responsible for his actions and Lucas chose to not testify during the trial. After a 12-week trial, which included 10 weeks of hearing testimony, and after eight days of deliberation, the judge returned with a verdict of guilty on all charges. Luca will serve a mandatory life sentences, 
and will be eligible for parole after 25 years. And he was also sentenced to 19 years for other charges. Julian's body was cremated on July 11th and his ashes were buried on July 26th at Notre Dame de Neige Cemetery in Montreal. On July 16, 2013, Edmund Police charged Backstore.com owner Mark Merrick with corrupted public morals for hosting the One Lunatic One Ice Pack video online. In January of 2006, Mark changed his plea to guilty and was sentenced to a six month conditional sentence. And that's all I have for this video. Uh, this crime was horrible. Uh, not only what he did, but what he did was horrible, but he filmed and he posted online which for me shows that he had no remorse at all and you didn't care if other people saw what he did but that's all for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a like so i know that you enjoyed it. and if you're new here please subscribe to my channel i really appreciate it and click the button next to it so you can get notified every time i upload a video i post videos every saturday and if you want to suggest the case, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and my Twitter will be linked down below. And as I said in the beginning, I also have a TikTok account. So if you want to follow me on there, my username will be on the screen and the link will be also in the descriptions. As usual, leave your thoughts about this case in the comments. Having all that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!